Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you're all enjoying Pulse House Chapel Week so far. As you all hopefully know, the theme this month in the chapel is respect. While pondering in my room about the definition of the word respect, I could never define the word and all of the generic internet sources provided me with definitions that I did not particularly like. Since the beginning of the school year, when I was told that my speech would most likely have to revolve around the theme of respect, I've been thinking about what that word means, and I still cannot define it for you without using examples. While growing up in the Bahamas, I was always told, respect your elders, respect your authorities, respect your friends, etc. I was always in need of someone to teach me the true meaning of respect and show me with actions what it means to be respectful. The man who tried to teach me was my grandfather. It was a regular day at my school in the Bahamas. I was an innocent child in grade eight with a life that I could not complain about. Nothing had ever happened to me that had altered my life except for the birth of my brother, of course. I sat in my computer class with not a worry in the world. The dean of the middle school walked in and spoke to my teacher and instructed me to grab my belongings and follow her to her office. I panicked, wondering, what on earth had I done wrong? My heart was racing, and my palms had dampened with sweat. Dean Dillette walked me up to her office, say saying very little en route. As she opened her office door and my eyes adjusted to the dim lights, I saw my mother sitting awkwardly among the books and other clutter. Dean Dillette left the office, and I noticed how uncharacteristically disheveled my mother looked, with her hair uncombed, her face bare of makeup, and her eyes red and swollen. Confused, I waited for her to say something that would put an end to my apprehension. But instead, she stood up to embrace me softly and gave me the news that shook the very foundation of my being. My beloved grandfather, Vincent Yelverton Diagular, had passed away at 9 a.m. on Monday, February 18th, 2008, when I was just 13 years old. Although he had been ill for five years with prostate cancer, his death was completely unexpected, at least for me. I was his first grandchild, and we had enjoyed a very special bond for as long as I could remember. He used to catch me when I raced down the slide in his garden. He used to let me sit in his big leather desk chair where I could go round and round. He used to take me out for ice cream and other treats after school. He had taught me how to play golf and we practiced together every Wednesday afternoon at his club. He never missed a school play or a Christmas concert. He used to brag about my grades to his friends. He was my biggest fan when I played soccer. At this point in my life, I realized that you truly do not know what you have until it's gone. I realized all of the subliminal lessons that my grandfather had taught me were going to be some of the most important things that I would need to know for the rest of my life. Only now do I realize some of the things that have been taught to me throughout my life. Throughout the time that I spent with my grandfather, I learned to respect him for his accomplishments and for how he carried himself with daily tasks. He was the type of man that could hold his head up high in all situations and handle encounters with grace under pressure. All men and women were considered equals in the eyes of my grandfather, and he never considered anyone to be a subordinate. This is one reason why I respected him and why many people respect him all over the Bahamas. 
He was one of the most revered men in the business community of the Bahamas, and even had the respect of the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition, as they both attended his funeral. Since I came to Appleby, my friends always told me that I put on a voice when I speak to adults and teachers. Some even go to the extent to now call it my prefect voice. I'm most likely speaking in this voice right now. I'm often asked why I do not speak to my elders the same way that I address my peers, and my only response is that it is done purely out of respect. I would never go up to Ken and Lennox and say, yo, what up, brah? <laughs> Instead, I would properly address him, because even if he is my brah, he deserves to hear my special voice. <laughs> respect is all around us. It is something that we should not have to earn. We should be respected as soon as we are born into this wonderful world. It should only be lost if we dishonor the fact that we are respected by someone. While living in the best house on campus, Pole's house of course, I enjoy the respect that I receive from my peers. Although we all have our differences, the Pole's house gentlemen are a prime example of what it truly means to be respectful. With around 70 boys living in one house, and most of them coming from countries all over the world, it is hard to imagine that no altercations take place, and to be honest, they do. After hearing many things about the other houses on campus and problems that they are facing, I can honestly say that this year in polls has been one with very little drama. Some of the worst situations that occur are when Nezum decides to bring all of his ladies over to the common room to watch a movie when I just want to relax in peace. Or when Luke and I are arguing with Duff and Sean over whether soccer is better than hockey. These in instances can't even be called altercations. They normally end with a quick game of rock, paper, scissors. Scissors, whoa. <laughs> Nezum was able to stay in the common room with all his lady friends, and Luke and I won the argument that soccer is better than hockey. Clearly, there will always be disagreements and situations that go on in the house, but nearly every situation seems to be handled with grace and respect. This respect that we have for, for each other will ensure a great finish to an already impressive year. Respect is one thing that makes the house work the way it does. Without respect, I could not imagine how the house would run. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to think. What does respect mean to you? Are you able to simply define respect? Who is the person in your life that taught you, or is still teaching you, the true meaning of respect and what it means to be respectful? Now, could you all please show your respect to this chapel? For Canon Lennox, Miss Tan, and the rest of the chapel team, and loudly sing hymn number three.